Okay, for those of you who are interested, here's a comparison of the L player, which is right here, the um, S10, also by iRiver, and the iPod Shuffle. Just to give you an idea of the size, relative size comparison. So you can see that iRiver was quite obviously targeting the shuffle demographic with this little player here. Alright, now I'm just going to give the basic overview of the uh, L player. This is the bottom right here got your mic and volume control plus on this side minus on this side and then your power button right here this is the top of the device you have your um, reset slot right here it's a pinhole alright uh, sides there's basically nothing on the, the right side on the left side you have so here you have your headphone jack, your little optional lanyard um, hookup, which is the lanyard is not included. Here you have your mini USB port, and this is pretty cool. Let me show you how this works. Just pop it off with your finger. Now there's a little plastic um, flexible rubber thing there that joins the cover to the case very tight. In the back what you have is your hold feature. Um, the red showing it's holding. Alright, just uh, gonna turn it around a few times just to so that you can see the rest of the device it's sort of in its totality. Alright, so now I'm going to turn it on. Got to hold down the button for about three seconds. It takes about, I don't know, five or six seconds to fully boot up. And there's your menu. This is uh, just one of two menu uh, styles that you can use. This is my personal favorite. Just like the um, S10, the L player, um, one of the coolest features is actually the physical um, interface itself. Unlike um, a lot of other MP3 players that have a dedicated interface somewhere on the face of the player, uh, the L player actually has the interface integrated into the player design. As you can see on the interface, the graphical user interface, these little arrows, um, those are actually activated by pressing the edges of the player. Very intuitive, and uh, the best thing about it, of course, is that you don't um, have to touch the screen or fool with some kind of little thumb wheel. Alright, I have an episode right here of... Um, the show True Blood. It's one of the few things that I converted. So this kind of gives you an idea of the video quality. It's actually very, very nice quality. Um, this is a two-inch screen. It's uh, an LCD backlit display, 320 by 240 pixels. Um, although in reality, um, that's kind of inaccurate because the DPI is actually much higher than a standard display. So this is almost double a normal 72 DPI display. So if if this was in 72 DPI, like a standard liquid crystal display, like on a laptop computer, the screen would actually be almost twice as big as this, which is pretty cool. So you can tell just by looking at it that the, the quality is actually quite nice. You can actually um, put text files on here. Only one one format. You can't put like a Word document or a PDF or anything like that. You have to just use plain text files. <coughs> you 
you can read the text. It does recognize paragraph breaks, which is nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to recognize word breaks. So it tends to chop up the words and just um, cut each line. My favorite features of the, the image viewer is that when you hold down on the right button, it brings up this sub-menu that lets you um, rotate, zoom, delete files, or even get information. It's uh, quite comprehensive and very useful, especially if you're viewing images that have text or you know need to be rotated for some reason. And the zoom is really cool. <coughs> Once you zoom in, you can then use the rest of the buttons to pan and view all aspects of the image. Unfortunately, there's only one zoom level, and it's not um, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So right now, I'm not actually zoomed in 100%. It's more like 80%. Voice recording. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just hit record. When you're done, press the button again. It saves the file. I, with my tests of this, there are two quality settings. There's high quality and low quality, and um, there's a definite difference between the two. But what I noticed most of all was that um, the mic isn't very sensitive, unlike the um, S10, which has incredible pickup. I mean, you can you can pick up a conversation across the room with the built-in microphone. This one is actually a lot more localized, so definitely you want to keep that in mind if you're doing voice recording. You practically have to speak into the microphone on the device to get a good recording. The FM tuner, just like in the S10, does not get the best reception. Um, of course, I live in kind of a rural area where we don't have a lot of um, high power radio stations, but still it's kind of kind of pathetic as, as far as the reception. I mean, I should pick up at least three stations, but I can usually only get two. So that's one thing to consider. Music. Um, I have over 40 albums on here right now. The playing options are quite extensive. You can play within an album or play from the entire collection, set playlists, all of the above. Um, I estimate you could fit um, about 50 um, 10 track, 10 to 20 track albums on the device. According to my calculations you could fit um, 20 two hour movies on the device. Uh, those are um, initially 700 megabyte movies that are then downsampled to around 400 megabytes by the um, program. I found it to be um, pretty easy to actually watch a movie on this device. So that was kind of a surprise to me. So this is a visual representation of the difference between the L player and the S10 screen size. Uh, this is actually at 72 dpi. You can see the player fits inside the actual resolution of its screen size. Um, while the S10 clearly is accurate so you can see you're actually getting more than 72 dpi in fact almost double the resolution which translates translates very well when you're watching a movie on the device okay battery life that's obviously a huge concern with a device like this um, just as an experiment I uh, have been testing it out and I was easily able to get um, 11 hours uh, continuous play of audio so that's pretty good as for video play um, 
I watched uh, an approximately two hour movie without any real problems. It didn't uh, shut down, there was still, I'd say about 20% of the battery life left afterwards. So that's uh, pretty exceptional. This is the um, 8 gigabyte model, costs about 100 bucks. You can get it a little cheaper depending on where you buy it.